Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of Almoravid by GMT Games, designed by Volko Runke, and just released uh, this year. It is a one to two player game. It plays in about three to four hours. It's part of the Levy and Campaign series, the first of which I believe was Nevsky. Apparently, sold is very well. It's uh, on GMT's rating. It is a eight and a seven out of nine in terms of solability. But let's crack it open and see exactly what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Oh, Don't forget to subscribe oh, and click the bell. One ringy dingy. Oh, all right, so let's dig in here. It's a big box, big heavy box. So, like I said, this is part of the Levian Campaign series, of volume two. I think I'm saying it right, Almovor, Alm, Almoravid, Almoravid, Reconquista and Repost in Spain, 1085 to 1086. So as usual, we start out with our manual, and this looks to be a 36 page manual. Again, the nice uh, upgraded, Return to the upgraded GMT matte stock. So happy to see the new releases getting this, which means they've hopefully abandoned that horrible glossy stock that they had for a while. Maybe there's a supply chain issue. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, there was uh, supply issues in the world. So um, anyway, so as usual, it's going to start off with a description of the... Uh, well, this one starts off with changes from Nevsky. So if you've played Nevsky, these are the changes. I have not played Nevsky, so I don't have to even acknowledge the changes exist. This will be the first one I learn. So uh, as good introduction, general course of play, list all the components, shows the map, which we'll look at in a little bit. Um, and then obviously the rules. So uh, let's see, there's in this advanced rules section. No, it appears that it's all rules. Um, well, it's 23 pages of rules. And then starting on 24, it goes to scenarios. So there's 11 pages of scenarios. So that's interesting. Um, let's see how many scenarios you get. All right. So now this is interesting on whether to use hidden mats. So obviously that can't uh, be used if you play it solo. Or maybe they have a way for it. Who knows? All right. So what do we got? We got two. I'm counting them even though they're A and B. C and D is four. Set up charts for each one, that's kind of nice. E and F, we're at six now, again with the setup charts. So it looks like we have six scenarios. A through F. One is apparently the whole the whole game. This is the 1085 to 1086 scenario. You know, key terms. That's nice to have an index where it tells you the different things and where to find them in the rule book and not by page number but by section number. So that's always nice to be able to go to sections and say, like, here's event service limit 3.32. So you know to go 3.32. GMT does a really good job with most of their games on the rule books. So there is that one there. Let's go look and see. If there were any specified credits for who did the rule book. All right, now we've got this is the background book. Oh, there's the credits. We'll get to that. Now this is a thick book. This is 68 pages. It's got all the cards that are going to be in play for it. Um, it's got the history of the scenario. It's kind of nice that they include this because this is a lot of paper to educate you. Um, also, apparently has some uh, rule. Um, clarifications in it, examples of play, things like that. But still, it's a pretty nice reference book for uh, the history and the period for them to include that, including the solar rules, which is only on page five. So the solar rules, um, solitaire Almor Almoravid includes no solitaire system, but a single player readily can handle both sides. Arrange the table as suggested in the illustration below or however preferred and alternate in the Christian and Muslim roles by the normal sequence of play. And I just say Christian because in some uh, in some time periods, Christian just meant Western, per se, not necessarily followers of Christ as we know it today. So uh, you get the Christians and the Muslim, just like there were probably Muslims then that weren't as devout. There were people who called themselves Christians who were not as devout. But then again, 
we kind of have that today too, don't we? Anyway, um, so it's just basically saying how to set it up uh, and just play both sides. So, interesting. I thought this had a solo system. All right, rule book, background book. All right, and then we have some stickers. Apply these stickers to each of the cylinders of the same color, and then they're spares. So you got one set, two sets. Nice of them to include that. They could have just included one little set, and then you blow them up, you blow it, and you've you've lost them. So uh, there you go. So you got the uh, set of stickers. So it means we're going to have some wooden cylinders in there. And then we've got some counter sheets. What do we got here. Looks like we have three counter sheets. So let's take a look at these. And they are pre-rounded. The uh, the font and the artwork is reminiscent of the of the time period, it would seem. And they're yellow on one side and green on the other, so they're flippable. So there's counter sheet one. Counter sheet two. Now the one actually looks like it's upside down. It's not. But the, the tail is longer. The serif is longer on the bottom, so it kind of looks like an L. But all right, so two sheets of counters and the third sheet of counters. Oh, they got mules and carts and loot and uh, provisions and money. Again, the artwork is very nice. Very, very uh, period evoking, region evoking. So that's cool. All right, three sheets of counters. And then we've got reference cards. So we've got an orientation map. I'm just going to show you the different areas and how to find them quickly. And then the Typha politics chart, adjust status chart, single page, GMT, glossy cardstock. They should sell that like at the store. They should just call it GMT glossy cardstock and everybody will know what it is. So we've got two uh, player aid sheets. These seem to be identical, not one for each side. There's one for each player, but they're not different for each side. So uh, it goes, it covers forces, uh, battle and storm, strongholds, different commands you can take, and it's your sequence of play. So you get two of those on the double width GMT cardstock. All right, so now we've got these foldouts. Let's see, is there any way to identify? Yeah, identify what they are here. So we've got the different flags. Now these are probably player screens, maybe, to set up. And you put your counters behind them so you can set up things privately. So we've got one here. This is um, Duke of Burgundy, the Diaz de Vivar, El Cid, Cambiador. And then this side is, yeah. So we've got the Christian, Muslim sides here. Which could really be probably East versus West. And that struggle's never ended. All right, so there's that. And now we've got the board. And we'll open that up and take a look at that a little, little bit later. And then we got stuff. What stuff do we have here? We have got we've got these pieces replace the dark purple pieces. So these are blue like bricks and some kind of like rounded triangles pieces that are to replace the purple ones in here. I wonder why. I've not heard why that happened. We've got six dice, three green, three yellow. They all work, and we added up, ooh, Yahtzee for the yellow side beats the one pair for the green. So they all work. And then, well, we got a lot of stuff in here. We're so heavy. Got a big stack of cards. Open those in a second. A big stack of wooden cubes, or, or pieces here. We've got the cylinders that we saw the stickers for. And we have Kind of a green, kind of a brownish green, really, here. Less olive, more brown. 
and the yellow cubes and then these other pieces and of course obviously the purple pieces we're supposed to cast aside for blue pieces for some reason all right and then we've got this stack of pre-punched thick tiles right, these clearly are battle boards to some degree because here we have okay so this is a battle board we got the attacker and defender setups here and then these others are apparently for different armies different factions yusuf and he's got his soldiers here so perhaps they attach like this yusuf here is the attacker or yusuf here is the defender maybe and then so there's one for each and it shows you what they're allowed to do like use of strength is two sergeants four african horse eight african foot and two militia whereas sir has six african horse six african foot four militia we got different we got mules asset and vassals each faction has a different structure abdallah al mustain the second or the eleventh uh, Abu Bakar, Al Mutawakil. Forgive me if I am pronouncing these incorrectly. I'm probably going to pronounce the uh, Western ones incorrectly as well. Al Mundir, and then Rodrigo, Alfonso. Oh, the King of Leon. He was no pawns, was he? Uh, Pedro Anzarez, Garcia Ordonez, Ordonez. Alvar Fanez, Fanez, Sancho the first, Udis the first, Ud Udis, Udis the first, and Rodrigo, another Rodrigo. So they obviously have different, different setups. These look to be a lot smaller, but maybe more powerful units. So you get those cards, and then obviously the attacker defender alignment board. And then what else we get? we get a bag of bags all right all right so we have a stack here on with arts of war and we've got a stack here with command and then another stack of arts of war these are obviously in a green and then we've got a green command deck which is a lot more cards it feels like let's see maybe they don't no, they're about the same. Looks like green's got slightly more cards. All right, so let's take a look at some hand cards. Al Mutamid. Okay, he has three points. So it's by faction and a certain number of points, I guess, that they're allowed to use. And of course, the rules will explain all that. The artwork, again, is very, very nice. I like the subtle colors to it. All right. And then Arts of War. Uh, each card apparently has two actions on them. And I mean, you can play for one of two reasons, or I don't know. It's interesting. It's not like a, a coin game or Twilight Struggle, for example, where it's this is my card and therefore I can use it for this or you can use it for some miscellaneous purpose. This is all mine, so I have a choice in what to play it for. So that kind of helps with mitigation as well. Each locale where Christian lords have coin, they reduce their total there to half, rounded up. So you can play it to devalue. All right, so that is the Muslim or Eastern side, and then the Christian or Western side has similar cards, also devaluation, is that they reduce, reduce the coin among the Tafis box and lords to two-thirds of the total rounded up. Runaway slaves play in muster for each unbesieged Christian lord to restore all lost foot units and add one transport. And then similar command cards for the different, the different factions, although I notice this one has Marshall on it. That must mean something special. And then a pass. All right, so now we're taking a closer look here of the board of Almoravid. And you'll see from a top view here, it's a 
pretty nice board. It is only uh, three, uh, six panels, uh, three across the top by two. So it's not a big, it's not too big of a board. It's very pretty. I do like the artwork. Very, again, like the rest of the game components, very reminiscent of the era. And we've got the various regions here. And then we've got a turn track that takes us through the spring of uh, 1085, on up through the winter, and then on again through 1086. And this here, 17 plus, is I assume if you go beyond turn 16, it's not a rating for the age of the game. Uh, then we have the legend, which shows you that there's castles, towns, fortresses, and cities. And it's just the legend for the board here. But you can see it going here. We have Granada. Hello, mother. Hello, father. Here I am at Camp Granada. Toledo. And this is not Ohio. It's pretty cool. So that is the mounted board that you're going to get with Almoravid. All right, so if you pick up a copy of Almoravid by Vocal Runky and GMT Games, you are going to get the two sets of Faction Command and Arts of War cards. You're going to get the battle board set. Very thick, very thick cards, very thick uh, chipboard. You're gonna get a bag of bags to store everything in. You're gonna get the six dice. Oh, and the uh, the uh, Muslims won that one. You're gonna get a bag of wooden pieces, a replacement bag of wooden pieces. You're gonna get two screens, which won't be needed in solo mode probably, because you can't hide things from yourself. Two copies of the player reference cards. You're gonna get that beautiful board we just looked at, mounted. Uh, you're gonna get a reference sheet along with an orientation map. Three sheets of pre-rounded, easy to punch counters. A set of labels and an extra set, a replacement set of labels for the uh, cylinders. A very nice 68 page background book with information on the period and the history and the 36 page rule book and a very, very, very nice redesigned box. And that is everything you get inside the box of Almoravid by GMT Games designed by Volko Runke. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!